This is the story of my journey to shoot a unicorn. A photographer's version of a unicorn, at least. When my brother and I learned that the Great American Eclipse was to first make landfall on the Oregon coast and pass directly over our family's cabin, we knew immediately that we had been presented with a truly once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We drove up a few days early as much to bask in the lush green countryside so foreign to us Southern Californians as we did to ensure that the wet, unpredictable Oregon weather that gives life to such beauty wouldn't compromise our eclipse visibility. If conditions weren't clear enough, we would have to abandon the comfort and shelter of our front row seat for the potential traffic and uncertainty of a less coastal vantage point. The day before the eclipse. Despite predictions of incoming traffic and chaos, there was barely a soul in sight. You would have never guessed that the country was just hours away from its greatest eclipse in almost a century. Creeping silently just offshore parallel to the coast, an ominous wall of clouds made it clear that the weather wasn't going to cooperate. The uncertainty weighed heavy in my stomach. We didn't drive 16 hours through the night days in advance just to be forced into a last minute relocation. The morning of the eclipse, my fears were realized when I peered out from behind the curtains to see that the clouds had snuck ashore under the cover of night. In a lucky and ironic turn of events, we found clear skies above the clouds at Cape Foul Weather. Yes, you heard that correctly. We got away from the foul weather at Cape Foul Weather, which is a basalt outcropping 500 feet above the ocean that marks the site of Captain Cook's Landing in Oregon, where the history of the state began. Just after 9 a.m., the first sliver of the sun disappeared behind the moon and the whole state stood at attention, adorning their special solar filter glasses that are needed to view anything other than Eclipse totality. And I focused all of my attention towards preparing to photograph it, though I took a few measures to make sure I captured events on the ground as well. I love how this thing looks on my head. <laughs> it looks like I'm wearing a diaper upside down on my head. You are. <laughs> as the sunlight was slowly sucked from the sky, the atmosphere grew saturated with otherworldly hues of pink, yellow, and blue. The darkening sky brought with it a chilling sensation that caught everybody on edge, bringing the entire state to a standstill. The silence was broken only by the voices of those who couldn't contain their excitement. It's happening! <laughs> there it is. Uh oh. Oh my god, this is crazy. Within moments, the fiery center of our solar system vanished from sight, taking its life-giving warmth with it and leaving no trace of its presence save for the corona of light around the dark side of the moon. I have known beauty to render me speechless before, but as I stood in a paralytic state of awe, I couldn't recall anything that had even come close to such celestial perfection. It was the most wonderful thing I had ever seen. A humbling wave of emotions took me over as I struggled to focus on operating my camera, and I couldn't help but realize how perfect a coincidence a total solar eclipse really is. The sun's diameter is about 400 times that of the moon, but it's also about 400 times farther away, which creates the appearance that they are the same size in the sky, allowing for such a perfect eclipse of the sun. If you look closely, you'll notice the bright red glow of the sun's chromosphere peeking out from behind the moon that gives a visual sense of the narrow margin by which it hides the sun. Though my primary goal was to photograph totality and capture my unicorn, I was equally curious to observe another rare phenomenon, the moon's shadow. Let me go back and show you. Despite the moon having a diameter of over 2,000 miles, the difference in size and distance between it and the sun means that its shadow is only 70 miles wide. That may sound quite large, 
but upon reaching the Oregon coast, the moon's shadow would be moving at 2,240 miles per hour. If I speed this up, you can see just how day and night different a partial and total eclipse really are. Totality plunged everything around us into total darkness. It was absolutely surreal. I could see stars in what appeared to be a night sky overhead, while sunlight remained at bay on the horizon, surrounding us in all directions. We truly were in the center of the moon's shadow. It was utterly bizarre. As I once again felt the familiar warmth of the sun on my face and its light flooded back into the landscape, I looked south down the coast to see that the clouds had moved further inland, likely blocking many people's view. I felt thankful that my view had not been compromised and realized that I had so much more to be grateful for. Bearing witness to something so awe-inspiring that vividly illustrates our supreme insignificance can't help but change your perspective. No matter how big our problems may seem, everything is relative, and in the grand scheme of things, we're nothing more than a few billion specks of life living on a blue marble floating in the vast, incomprehensible nothingness of space. Our mere existence is a miracle, and life is an incredible gift, one not to be squandered. So relish in your insignificance and learn to let go of the things that bring you down, because time is too precious to be spent unhappy about things that don't matter. What does matter? Things like spending quality time with your brother, and sharing a beautiful experience together. That's the stuff that sticks, and it's something that I will remember dearly for the rest of my life. A time will come when your days are spent and you'll have to leave your material possessions and wealth behind, faced with the question of whether or not you really lived your life, and what do you really have to take with you into that good night. So as my little brother would say, hold on to these memories. Someday you'll need them. There it is. Uh-oh. Oh my god, this is 